Now at the bottom of that blue panel we've got for the cycle trail directions, we do have a logo. And that is composed of uh, a, just a vector shape uh, of the main logo. It's actually meant to be a, an old millstone from the days we used to mill corn and things. And that is the symbol for the Peak District. So um, you notice that adjacent to that is editable text, which is fine. Um, however, this is one of those rare occasions where it might be worth converting the text to outlines, which means converting the text from being editable uh, with all its type properties and turning the type characters into shapes. Quite often when you've got typing uh, involved with a logo, it's going to need to be scaled or different kinds of sizes. And so really in this case, it would be better if we right clicked on that text frame and you can choose create outlines. Now that option is also available from the type menu at the top of the screen. And then we've got in here, create outlines. So once I do this, the text frame itself that sort of disappears and now in its place, we're seeing essentially shapes. Uh, what I can then do is shift and left click on that millstone and we can go to object and group because now if I was to create a duplicate of this and then just move to the side and if I needed to scale it down, I'm not going to run the risk of the text becoming overset or having issues with the text frame itself, passing it onto somebody else who maybe doesn't have that font of Miria Pro. So in in those rare occasions, it might be worth converting your type for things like this that need to be scaled on a regular basis um, to outlines. But in all other occasions, I would tend to say it's very rare that you'll need to do that. Um, that is a bit of an exception, but that is how you do it. Of course, once you've converted it to outlines as text has become shapes now, there's no way going back to that. So it might be worth having a version that is still editable text to always fall back to.